My name is Paul Connor. I'm an assistant football coach at Wheaton North High School outside of Chicago. I've been here for uh, five years. Uh, my reputation, uh, as, as some might know, uh, is, is that of being a wing tee type of person. It's, uh, it's what I had done for 28 years prior to coming to Wheaton North, where I assist here in a, in a different offensive concept, but still, still a good one and a, and a lot of fun. But uh, I'm a wing tee guy by background and probably uh, will, will uh, Will, will, will pass as a wing tee person. It's, it's been the foundation of my football background. I, I have come to know that um, a lot of people feel like the wing tee is, is passe. Uh, as many people uh, that are adding it are phasing it out and going to more wide open approaches of scoring and, and attacking vertically and down the field and whatnot, it's all okay. But I'm an advocate of the wing tee. And, uh, and I don't think you necessarily have to be taking the ball from center to run the wing tee. I know enough people around the globe that are now running wing tee concepts and wing tee principles and play selections from shotgun and doing, doing, more, uh, doing various things that appear to be a little more dynamic. But when it comes right down to it, the wing tee provides you with great blocking angles, outstanding attack principles, putting defenders in conflict, spreading people, making people defend the field vertically and horizontally. And if you need to do it out of different formations, uh, it's great. I, I'm still here to preach the viability of the wing tee. And, and today, I, I'm going to take what's standardly called the buck sweep, uh, no matter whether you're a shotgun guy or standard or whatever, and talk about the attack principles, the blocking assignments, uh, the itemization of techniques, landmarks, and be real detailed as heck uh, providing multi-formation against the different types of defenses people come up with to stop you. So I don't want to run you off by thinking I'm, you know, four yards in a cloud of dust. Be a shotgun guy and wing, run the wing tee. I'm just here to talk about the viability of buck sweep and, and, and how it is still a, a tremendous way to attack a defense and the reasons why it is. Um, I know that jet sweep is great, and, and I, I am a jet sweep guy. I love jet sweep. I have not dabbled in Rocket, but I know that Rocket is very popular around the country. An old friend of mine, Rich Erdley at Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh, is a tremendous Rocket person. But I'm not willing to bail out on the viability of Buck Sweep or its benefits or efficiency. I still think it's good. A lot of people will say it's a more high-maintenance way to attack a flank. Given. It, it does require a little bit of maintenance. But I think the benefits uh, are, are well worth the maintenance and the time you spend on teaching it and the kind of effort you put into it. Because for the following reasons, um, great blocking angles. That's a staple of the wing T system. It provides great blocking angles for everybody on the field. You're putting a heck of a lot of people at the point of attack. You got two guards pulling through a hole. You're, you're angle blocking at the point of attack with the tackle tight end as well as the wing. You got a backside tackle uh, running his fanny off from the backside being what we call the touchdown maker, a personal escort downfield to provide the running back a, someone to cut back off of if in fact he can get down there. And he, and he can if you ask him to. It's still a very viable thing for all those reasons. It provides great conflict for a defense. Remember, you don't just run buck sweep. Please don't be one of those guys who says, oh yeah, we run buck sweep, and then what else do you do? Well, we do that, this, that, that. They're not running the wing tee, they're running plays. If you run buck sweep, you got trap, or whatever variation of trap you want. You got waggle, and whatever combinations you want. You want to incorporate the old cruise package, from, from Mike McClinchy and Mickey Kwiatkowski and all the great guys, the Billy Zwans and all of the East Coast. It's great, fabulous stuff. But remember, with Buck Sweep, you got all that stuff. So you can still do it. No matter where the heck your quarterback is, you can design a way to do that if you still want to run the wing tee, but you want to give your quarterback a little bit more vision of the field and, and get him away from the center. You can do that. Uh, what, what I want to try to do again is, is provide a, a multi-formation approach here. And um, as we continue to do this, sir, I think that'll become uh, very apparent. In looking at a multi-formation approach to this concept of running the buck sweep uh, and, and allowing you modern football coaches to broaden where, where you put the quarterback and the kind of vision you want to give him, um, I, I have grown to know that running buck sweep out of standard 100 and 900 is still good. But certain people do roll up. They roll coverage to the tight end wing. They start slanting to the tight end wing. 
Uh, uh, they, they do different things to take advantage of that tight end wing. If they do, we, we will break formation and run sweep out of various formations. But, but you'll notice during this thing, you know, I, I usually come back to that staple, 100 and 900, to run buck sweep, uh, unless they're rolled up over there with the strong safety and they're, and they're, they're making life miserable uh, for you. Uh, I, I certainly want to concentrate on different front concerns that they're going to give you during this hour as well, because people have come up with answers. Blitz through this gap, do this, twist this, do that. Um, one thing about buck sweep is you, you are taking care of, of every, every gap on the line of scrimmage if you're really running it well. And uh, I intend to itemize that for you here coming up on this tape. Uh, so let, let's run buck sweep from multiple formations against uh, various defenses, both, uh, both odd and even here, and keep the viability of the wing tee alive here, no matter what kind of concept you want to utilize with your quarterback. When I go to a clinic or I buy a tape from somebody or a DVD, the last thing in the world I want to see is someone scheming me. And, and giving me this play and that play and showing me this and that. I, I want an itemized look at how people do what they're supposed to do. I, I really, in my old age now, uh, after being in the profession here for 33 years, I want people to show me how do you teach that kid that. Um, in my current position here at Wheaton North, we're incorporating pistol into in our offensive concept. I've learned a ton of football in the last couple months from our new coaches here. It's helped me become a better football coach. I want to know why we're doing it, and I want to see what do I tell the A back? What do we tell the H back? I need to understand technique to make it mean something for me. So I want to technique you here and itemize you on buck sweep within the wing T theory and concept. We are blocking every gap. I have uh, labeled each gap working from the center on out, just like everybody else does, A, B, C, and in the outside I've always called O. Some people call it D, but... You know, the A gap, the B gap, the C gap, and the D gap. Uh, we are blocking every gap on buck sweep. That's one of the beauties of the football play. So they can blitz and do all their twists and all those tars and tags and rags and everything. But if we're really, really running the wing T, and, and we, we itemize it this way, you're blocking every gap so they can't get through. Starting from play side working in. Our wing back is blocking first man inside. He's in standard wing T alignment. He is two and two from the tight end. His inside leg is staggered with his toe to the corresponding instep of, uh, uh, instep, pardon me, of his outside foot. He's got his chin and his shoulders out over his toes. He is digging his toes into the ground. He is grabbing grass with his toes. So we don't have to talk about, you know, get on the balls of your feet and pretty soon you're leaning and you're in a procedure penalty. We don't do that. We grab grass with our toes. It helps us have a firm foundation on the field without leaning. That assignment is called gap block where we lead step with our recessed foot. We anticipate penetration of that man inside of us, the defensive end, and we hit him with our right shoulder. Our head's in front to stop penetration. We don't hit with our head. Our head's in front, it's a landmark, it's a boundary, and we hit with our right shoulder and we are creating a movement down the line of scrimmage. The tight end's doing the same thing from his alignment. He's three feet from the tackle. He is gap blocking on the down tackle. His assignment uh, uh, verbally will be gap down backer. Gap block, utilize the down block technique if in fact the lineman is flexed off the ball or inside release to a linebacker if that's the first man inside you. Gap down backer. We have reduced that in my, in my bringing up by the gentleman who taught me this offense. I've re, we have reduced that to simply read down. Read down. Block the first darn guy in front of you. The offensive tackle is going to block down into that box where the nose guard and linebacker could threaten the AB gap. The tackle is blocking down, trying to help the center with the nose. Against an odd front, that tackle blocks down to try to stop that nose from getting play side. Okay? And at the same time, he's stopping that linebacker from blowing up through that AB gap area. So the tackle's uh, technique is... Uh, is not a, a pure gap down backer in my terminology. It's, it's uh, slightly bastardized or adjusted, shall I say, to stop the nose guard and the linebacker. Because we know that nose guards can give center a center one heck of a time if you leave him alone a lot. So we're going to help the center with him. 
The center's assignment is to block front side A gap and stay flat. He steps flat to the A gap and sits his fanny right in the A gap. He gets big, he puffs up, and he sits his hind end down in that hole, in that A gap, and no one violates it. These types of techniques allow the front side guard to pull. And the front side guard is always going to deep pull on buck sweep. He is going to execute deep pull technique by throwing his outside arm violently, creating rotation of the hips so that he can be a yard and a half deep from his original position. And now he's deep enough to execute an inside out kick out of a corner. He is eyeballing the hip of the down blocking wing back. That guard, when he does deep pull and he rotates his upper body and violently throws that right elbow open to open his hips, he is eyeballing the wing block. And as the wing back blocks the end, that wing wants to come as tight to his hind end as he can, get his shoulders upfield as quickly as he can, and kick out the rotating corner or perimeter force utilizing right shoulder technique as he's going to the right. So he's kicking out with his right shoulder with his head up in the running lane upfield. And that, that guard needs a lot of reps on that technique. That's a tough darn technique to utilize, but you can do it. I, I've taught it and many of you have too. You can do that. As the center is sitting in the front side A gap, that backside guard is pulling flat. That backside guard, the left guard in the diagram that corresponds to this particular uh, 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 slide here, that backside guard simply is going to pick up and point his right foot, his play side foot at the bench. And now he's running with authority and he's going to get as deep as he needs to get to get around that wing block and that tackle block and that tight end block. And it sometimes forces you to get a hair deep because it's not all pretty and beautiful and there's a lot of congestion and a lot of garbage. Get as deep as you need to get to get around to block the onside inside backer, who I, will, who I will now call the Mike linebacker, the strong side guy. When we break the huddle, ready break, and that backside guard comes out of the huddle, he's getting the number of that Mike linebacker and he's locked up with him. And as he pulls around that corner and he comes around the hip of that offensive or that, ru that running back, that right back, that right wing, he is going to scrape rear ends with that right wing and he's going to lock up and seal that backer. That backer is going to have to look at the fullback buck fake, the trap fake. We hope keeps that linebacker in a little bit. And of course, if he doesn't pay attention to it, we're going to hand off to the fullback and run trap. That's the beauty of buck sweep. But... Here's the timing of all that stuff. As you can see on that diagram, heck, there's lines all over the doggone place. Here's the timing. The backside guard will pull flat through the quarterback box before the fullback fills the backside A gap and sits in the backside A gap. So the backside guard, he's two feet from the center. He's got to open up his hips and he's got to use those arms with authority. He's got to run his fanny the heck out of there because the fullback is going to come right off his tail and smash into the backside A gap. So it's backside guard pull, fullback fill. Boom, right up in there. The quarterback is going to open on the midline to the running back. So if I am the quarterback on the corresponding itemization of buck sweep, the quarterback, after he gets the snap, will open up on the midline, hiding the ball accordingly with tight elbows and the football to the third hand. I open to the side of the ball carrier. The ball carrier is coming from the left half position. On my second step, the fullback, of course, is off the midline, and we are just clicking shoulder pads. The mesh and the fake between the fullback and quarterback is tight, but I don't ball fake him. That gets to be the point where the ball's on the ground and you're out coaching yourself. There is no fake between the ball and that fullback. The fullback creates the fake with his tight relationship with the quarterback. But I got mesh priority. I'm sitting my rear end on the, on the, on the, on the uh, midline myself. So the fullback passes me. On the second step, I start leaning off the midline, and I, in fact, will bring the ball off the midline with a forearm length handoff to the left half. And I'm not reaching. I'm showing everybody the ball if I do that. I'm not running the wing tee. I'm right here. All right, halfback takes the ball. We're off to the races. The halfback is taught by Delaware textbook. 
and I, I've gotten away from this a little bit, by Delaware textbook, in order to get that dive back, the advantage of getting to the point of attack a little quicker, is just as if I was stealing second base and I'm on first base. That left half is taught from the dive back position. He is taught to cross over and then take the ball in his hip pouch with an open hip. Gives him a little added advantage getting to the point of attack because he's not in motion. If you're in motion, you don't have to do that because you can run this out of motion, you all know that. But from the dive back position, from standard 100 and 900, that's what the left half will do. Now, it's imperative that he take the football and maintain the integrity of the four yard level, just exactly as I have it drawn up there. Stay on the four yard level. It solves problems for you that you can't see coming yet. You want to create the illusion for the perimeter force defender. For the perimeter force defender, he needs to think that you're going to try to outrun him. And just when you get him sucking up to contain you, the front side guard kicks out, that halfback plants his outside foot on a dime and makes a 90 degree cut upfield. And now he's looking to pick up the backside tackle coming across as the touchdown maker. And I've seen so many of these buck sweeps as touchdowns and big gainers by running backs who will cut back behind that touchdown maker. It's unbelievable, it's beautiful too. Okay, the quarterback will carry out waggle fake at six, six and a half yards, and we will have him break the line of scrimmage with his fake. We want him bootlegging and running like a son of a gun and break the line of scrimmage with his fake be before he turns around and spectates. Now, I've seen some people fake a pass, you know, with the quarterback. Whatever's good for you and your kid. I just always taught it as a boot on that because, by, you know, people start figuring out it, you know, you haven't got it. But uh, you know what? Break the line of scrimmage because we might just run a naked with you at any point. The primary receiver on Waggle, who is the backside, the backside open end here on, uh, on the buck sweep, will run a corner route. And we tell him, you investigate coverage. Run a corner route, see if you can get open. Run an outcut, see if the cushion's big enough to get you open. And experiment with coverage and investigate what it is. Come back and communicate to the quarterback what you think you can beat the kid on. I believe I've itemized every position. Um, ooh, backside tackle. As you're going to be the touchdown maker, you must laterally step into the B-gap and protect the B-gap from violation from the linebacker blitzing. If that linebacker blitzes the B-gap, you're never going to get downfield. Boom, it's just going to be a collision. Keep his fanny out of the backfield because the fullback is sitting his rear end exactly as I have drawn it. The fullback is sitting his rear end in the backside A-gap and he's not running upfield. He creates a big hole if he runs upfield. Sit there. The, 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 the center takes the front side A gap and the fullback takes the back side A gap and it's a wall. You're butt to butt, cheek to cheek, and no one violates it. Okay, that's itemization of buck sweep from that standard 100 or 900 type formation. <clears throat> you can run that out of a shotgun. I just don't want people to feel like I'm running them off because I'm too standard. There's a lot of people running buck sweep concept from shotgun. You just, you just got to do it from the shotgun formation and you guys that are doing it or thinking about doing it can check with the guys that are doing it to find out the footwork and the handwork. But it's, you can run buck sweep out of shotgun. Changes for one or one and a half guys. That's itemization of buck sweep. I hope it's in detail enough uh, because I tend to be a detail guy and I certainly don't want to talk about it and not do it for you. I hope it's detailed enough. Perhaps the thing that, that made me most want to variate formation and running buck sweep was the, uh, is the diagram that I have presented here where, where we have standard formation uh, in the old Delaware textbook, but we have a defensive adjustment by the secondary whereby three deep coverage is now utilized with the strong safety rolled up to the tight end wing. This checkmates you pretty good. If you run buck sweep, and you want to run it up into a corner and a strong safety rotated over the tight end, it's going to be a long day because they got you matched up pretty good. That has made us variate formation and start being creative with formation, going weak side, going unbalanced, spreading people out, maybe even going too tight, seeing if that produces some conflict. But running buck sweep pure and simple out of this formation against the rotation is counterproductive. Now, I believe I said this a few minutes ago, I, I, I will still run buck sweep out of this formation. It's a great formation to run it out of. 
as long as they're not pre-rotated. But I'm not running it into rotation. I'm running it because they're letting me run it over there, and I want to take advantage of one defensive back versus a tight end wing front. So that's the standard formation. If they rotate to you, good reason to break formation, and it gives me another 40 minutes of, uh, of clinicking to do here because of it. Running slot formation uh, tends to uh, force the strong safety go, to go back to the spread end slot side, leaving the tight end wing uh, rather inefficiently defended uh, against three deep type people. Um, so breaking formation, now you got a wing tight end, and a slot split end, now that strong safety has to decide where to go. If he decides to go to the slot side, then we've got the flank to the tight end wing we want. It's great. Now we can motion and run buck sweep right up the boundary to the tight end wing. That, that subtle adjustment by one person on offense tends to put a defensive secondary in conflict and force that strong safety over. And if it does, let's run tight end wing sweep with a little bit better odds of getting up in there uh, rather than if they rotated uh, a three-deep secondary over there with a strong safety. I have always found unbalanced formation, or end over, has, has dictated to a pre-rotated cover three, where they utilize the strong safety to check Mitch at the tight end wing. End over, unbalanced, utilizing a slot to the back side, has been a great way to spread a defense and get the flank I'm looking for. Obviously, if I go end over, uh, I, they have got to bring a corner out with my spread end, but I still have a tight end wing inside there to run my off tackle or my sweep game. So I, I really, I think unbalanced is a great way to dictate to a defense, and it's viable whether you're using shotgun or whatever. Uh, I can now run buck sweep, I think, with a lot of efficiency and a lot of effectiveness and a lot of proficiency uh, just by going one man over and going, uh, going end over. It's unbalanced. It causes defensive people a big, you know, hey, it's unbalanced, unbalanced. We're moving one guy, and we're just going to do the same darn thing anyway. In the end, when you're game planning against a wing T team, you don't really have to be Dick Tracy or Elliot Ness to figure out we want to run to the tight end wing. And uh, therefore, it's provided me with a need, and, and other associates that I have out there that I'm lucky to have in the, in the profession, it's provided us a need for more weak side offense. Well, I'm really interested in running as much weak side buck sweep as I can, staying away from the tight end wing. When you bring a tight end wing up there, it should send a message to a defense, we're interested in running here. Now, if they don't adjust to it, well, by golly, we're going to. But, but more weak side offense seems to be a need of most wing T people. And, and if it isn't one of your needs, you might want to think about it. Because if we get too tight end wing oriented, they got us on computer, they got us on tendency, and they're going to make it miserable for us. We've got to be able to be balanced enough to run a little bit, uh, at least a little bit of weak side offense. Weak side sweep is a great way to take away that tendency of running to the tight end wing. Here we have spread formation and we're running weak side sweep, utilizing the slot to the left, blocking down inside with typical wing T assignment. He's blocking first man inside. Everyone else's assignment is the same. The, since we're running buck sweep to the spread end, we have a stock over there against the corner, of course. And the outside linebacker in a 4-4 scheme is the guy we are going to attempt to kick out. So do you kick the secondary out? Some people might want to crack on the outside backer with the spread end and have the guard kick out the secondary. I would rather kick out that outside backer. He is the flat cover, perimeter force guy usually, and run buck sweep right up inside there in a relative position of where I would run it to the tight end. The slot alignment has got to be adjusted a little bit, gentlemen. I said uh, in, a, in a previous video for Coach's Choice when talking about alignment of a slot, without a tight end, the slot, his outside leg, when there's no tight end, is three yards wide of the outside leg of the left tackle. So if I'm the left slot, there's my left tackle. My outside leg is three yards wide of that left tackle tackles outside foot. That puts me in a relative position had I have a t had a tight end right in there. So now you can take the tight end out of the game without having all this shifting around and, oh, geez, I don't know where the heck I line up. If your outside leg is three yards wide 
of your corresponding tackle's outside leg, then you're in the same position you'd be in with a tight end who has a three-foot split from that tackle. Now, let's be honest. That slot, that wide, will be hard-pressed to make a down block on a defensive end that wide. So you know what? We cheat him. We do. Truth be known. We adjust a little bit. We'll take that slot and we'll say, cheat in a couple feet so you have a better opportunity to block down on that defensive end. We just cheat him a little bit. Well, how much do you cheat him? As much as you need to get it done. Some kids don't need as much as others, but I want to run weak side sweep, so we are going to utilize that. And once again, I know, your slots are 175 pounds, so are mine, sometimes on a heavy day. But we're putting them in a good angle, and we're, we are predicating that our ball carrier stay at a four yard level. He's not running a power course where he's running a banana type course up off tackle where any penetration would hurt him. He's at a four yard level and he's cutting right off the seat of the pants of that slot who's blocking down for him. Keep your running backs disciplined at a four yard level and penetration is less apt to hurt you. You might have some garbage filtering through and arms flailing and legs flapping. Stay on a four yard level, you'll get a chance to make your cut and you can avoid all the garbage up in there. That's a wing T staple on buck sweep. You better stay at a four yard level or it, it becomes one of those, ah, buck sweep's not very good. It'd be good if you kept him at a four yard level and at least make contact with that slot with his head in front, utilizing left shoulder technique, and the head in front simply stops penetration. He's not hitting with his head, I'd never teach that. The head is a landmark, it's all it is. It's a boundary. And then you run weak side sweep, and now you're balanced. Ah, shucks, these guys run weak side sweep too? Shoot, we thought we could just, you know, slant to the tight end wing all day. You can't, we're running weak side sweep too. Now we sure as heck want to run weak side sweep from unbalanced also. Because if we wing T people are tight end wing oriented, we sure as heck are gonna be tight end wing oriented if we're running unbalanced or end over. I wanna run weak side sweep from unbalanced. This really gives you a dynamic approach to attacking the weak side flank. I always have this in a game plan. I always wanna have a lot of good stuff to my unbalanced side, and I'm gonna use unbalanced formations. However, I want to have in my pocket three or four answers to people who overload the unbalanced side. Three or four answers to people who slant to the unbalanced side. Uh, three or four answers to people who simply line up on the defensive front overshifted and reduced in a way where they have more defenders to, to the play side of unbalanced. It only makes sense. Well, I want to have some answers to counter that. And one of them is buck sweep to the weak side. You can see by the corresponding diagram that overplay to the strength of unbalance can be countered simply by going the other side. Let's run weak side buck sweep. Well, gee, it changes. No, it doesn't change for anybody. It doesn't change for anybody. Everybody's the same. Nobody changes. Well, what's your tight end doing the back side? Whatever the heck you want him to do. Inside release him and get him to the running lane. You know, he's an extra guy. He's an extra guy. You know, he's, he's ineligible, so you can't run a route with him and experiment with coverage. So, you know. Everyone else is the same. And if, and if you're real concerned about, well, you know, they're going to go ahead and they're going to rotate back to motion because all you're doing is motion. Well, you can run the same play from a no motion formation. Uh, you can run an unbalanced formation with a dive back as well. And you can also run that on a down sound, on a quick count. You can run that if you're real concerned with being motion happy by the quarterback once again coming up. Hut! And boom, run it, weak side sweep. Ah, shucks, now they're running to the weak side of formation, and we thought they were just going to go to the unbalanced side. I think you better have something to the weak side to keep people honest on defense. And you can run buck sweep that way. If you want to use a multi-formation approach in running buck sweep, again, standard quarterback, shotgun, whatever, I'm here to preach buck sweep, not where you put your quarterback. I'm not here to create a Fred Flintstone environment but I believe in the wing T and the viability of it fitting into many different concepts offensively and many coaches uh, 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 thought processes. Uh, double slot, double wide. Okay, ace, ace! Geez, they got four quick. Well, with me they know it's not four quick. I don't know if I've ever had four quick. I've had four guys out there. What I wanna do is run my standard offense, but I wanna come up with this formation. 
It's perfectly balanced. It enables me to run whatever I would run to the left side, to the right side. Uh, it spreads a defense and forces them to defend the width of the field a little more often than the standard 100 and 900. It, uh, it gives me the ability to have a check with me system, whereas if I want to run buck sweep against a defense and I'm using two wides with double slot, ace formation, uh, I can in the huddle say, you know, buck sweep on the ball and I can come up and as a quarterback, I can just start counting. Where are fewer of their guys to the right? Then I have a special word I use up there when we're running buck sweep right. If I come up and find out, oh man, they're really overloading the field, good, I can run buck sweep into the boundary. That's an old Delaware concept. They love running buck sweep into the boundary back in the heyday. They loved it. So do we all. So you can, you can run it buck sweep according to, to a check with me system too if you're using a perfectly balanced system here or a perfectly balanced offensive set. I love this, this uh, ace set running it. You, you can really... You can really get and dictate to them what you want to do because whatever they do to one side, they can't do the same thing to both sides. They're, you know, they're out there playing with 11 guys too. It's an odd number. I love that formation to run buck sweep. So it gives you one more formation to give you some multiplicity in running the old-fashioned Delaware wing tee. If I haven't done it already, uh, and please uh, forgive, me, forgive me if I'm re being repetitious, um, I'm not a... Uh, I'm not a PowerPoint guy yet. I'm not a real high-tech guy. Uh, I use the overhead and I draw my own stuff, and I hope that comes across okay. I know it's not as pretty and cute and professional as some other guys might do it, but it's the way I do it, and uh, I hope it's still teachable. It seems like in the past it has served purposes for people, and I, I don't intend to do anything but serve that purpose, so I hope it's okay. And, and if anything is old-fashioned, it's uh, two tights double wing. So this is kind of my style of formation. But even I'm smart enough to know, and at least liberal enough to know, that this really reduces the amount of field that your defense has to cover. Um, but if you're interested in giving a defense balance and utilizing two good tight ends and, and doing something that you and your own coaching personality feels is, is very good and very, a very positive thing and a, a way you can attack a defense, there's balance right there too. Uh, which way are they going to overload? You can run buck sweep either way. You're certainly not making them defend the width of the field, but it is perfectly balanced, and now you can do a lot of things both ways. So you can run buck sweep left or right here. I'd be remiss if I didn't just include this formation, although it, it, it is with me tended to be more of a goal line thing where, where we're really smashing it up the field there. And again, maybe checking with me and reading defenders in a, in a minimal amount of geography there. But, uh, there you go. Two tights, uh, double wing, multiple formations, and running buck sweep. You can do it. If you can line up in any of these formations and run buck sweep, you can certainly line up in one of them, take it away, and provide the defense with a totally new look, and, and, and again, still run the play. So uh, I've always enjoyed shifting to. Uh, I've always enjoyed running buck sweep from one formation and then taking that formation away, giving them a different one, and running the same darn play the other way. One more thing for you to get ready for, multiplicity of formations running the same play. It's buck sweep, no matter how you use your quarterback. Uh, what I've done here is given you formation, uh, what I would call spread left with a slot to the left and a dive back to the right. And then with a simple word or code from your quarterback, you're shifting to wing right and running sweep that way. I, I think you'd have to agree if you're a defensive person, if you saw a slot left here and a dive back tight end to the backside, you might be willing to spend a little more attention, whether it's mentally or physically, to that slot split end. Well, I'm just taking that away, boom, and shifting those guys down on you and running buck sweep to the tight end wing. Multiple formation, run buck sweep, giving them one formation, taking it away and giving them another, utilizing the tight end wing. Shift to buck sweep. You can also shift into unbalanced and run buck sweep. What's, what's given to you on a corresponding diagram is wing right, uh, balanced formation, the old standard 100-900 look from Delaware. And what you're going to do in moving uh, two or three people is switch or shift to unbalanced left. Uh, this is real good against people that do pre-rotate to your tight end wing in a balanced set. And now you're going to take your left half, make them a wing. You're going to take your tight end, move them over to a left tight end, and you're going to take your backside wing and make him a dive back and run buck sweep opposite the way you lined up 
in with your regular, uh, with your regular tight end wing. So uh, run, go from balanced to unbalanced, and then run buck sweep into the, un, the unbalanced to take advantage uh, of a defense that's not expecting that, or that it's the, a defense that's aligned to the prior tight end wing balanced formation. Shift to unbalanced and run buck sweep. This is exo as, 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 as exotic as I get. It's an unbalanced formation utilizing two spread ends. Obviously, one of them is covered and uh, ineligible, but it does cause defenses to get a little bit ruffled and hot and bothered when they see it for a while. You'd be amazed how many people don't recognize this. They don't, they don't see it. So they, they want to rotate everything over there. Holy smokes, you know, trips. Well, I don't even know if that's trips if one of them can't catch the ball. Maybe it still is in a defensive thought. But anyway, uh, unbalance or trips one way, run weak side, buck sweep. Run where they ain't. If they don't shift or compensate for that formation, imagine the possibilities of using those two split ends. You can crack both of them and kick out with the guard. Crack one of them, run off, and use the front side guard to kick out. If they do pre-rotate, looking at the numbers, holy smokes, they got a lot of people over there. Let's get over there. OK, well, run buck sweep the other way. Uh, and, you, and you might say, well, how the heck do you know? Are you guessing? I'm game planning. I got some stuff to the strong side, depending on what they're doing, and I got some stuff to the weak side, depending on what they're doing. You know the beauty of the wing tee? They're the same place. I got strong side cross block belly, I got weak side cross, uh, cross block belly. Strong side jet, weak side jet. Strong side buck, weak side buck. I, I got, uh, you know, power kick out weak, power kick out strong. And, and depending on what kind of pattern I'm getting and what kind of communication I'm getting from the press box, from my kids and from my own vision, I'm going to try to run where they ain't. But this one here is an excellent opportunity to start running weak side buck sweep when, when they see all those bodies over to the right-hand side, heck, run buck sweep the other way. It's multiple formation running buck sweep. I did mention earlier that we were also going to cover certain front adjustments that can cause problems running buck sweep, or at least certain things that can make us practice and, and work from Monday through Thursday or Friday preparing for. They, they certainly can do these things to us. And I did make a really big issue about a half hour ago about how the wing T blocks every gap, and I itemized it. And these guys got the A gaps, B gaps, C gaps. Every gap is covered no matter what stunt people are going to use or what alignment they come up with. Now, now I'm not saying that I'm going to run buck sweep into a flank where there's two or three defensive backs piled up. That, that should be well founded. I've told you we're going the other way or we're using different formations to counter pre-rotated coverages. I'm talking about different fronts that can bother us. This particular adjustment, and, and most people are using all the shades now and all, this adjustment can bother you if you don't take precautions and execute properly and stay with the integrity of making sure you have every gap blocked. This is a front side or a strong side nose shade in a, in a one technique or a two eye or whatever the heck you want to call them. But it's obvious it's an odd man front, but the nose is shading the tight end wing side. That's a pretty good adjustment. Whoever the heck's coaching that defense has figured out these guys are a wing T and they'd rather run to the tight end wing. You're right. We rather, we would rather. So we're going to slide that nose over there and cheat half a man and raise heck with them and get a bit of an advantage. And if we can blow that A gap up and screw up the mesh points these guys are doing in the backfield, you know, it's even better for us. Okay, that nose will cause problems if we haven't got integrity in our assignments. I do want you to realize this now. That center on buck sweep to the right has play side A gap. And he's going to snap the ball, and he's not going to fire out. He's not going to backpedal. He's taking a lateral step. He's sinking his hips, dropping his buttocks, and he's getting big, and he's puffing up in the A-gap. And he's, 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 he's hanging on for dear life in there, making sure no one violates the A-gap. That's all he's got. He's not blocking a man. He's not running upfield, attacking some linebacker, getting a, a, on a highlight film. He's sitting his big rear end in the A-gap and, and knocking the crap out of whatever the heck shows up there. That's what his job is. <clears throat> the right tackle, as we said, previous to this particular, this particular moment, the right tackle on an odd front is blocking down on that nose guard. If he becomes an A-gap threat, even more so. That right tackle in his read down or his gap down backer, he is blasting that nose guard 
and he's getting his fanny in a position that he can help out in case that linebacker decides to violate that territory as well. So that tackle, verbally, getting away from the, the, the uh, playbook stuff that we tell him, what I'm telling that tackle is, you block down on that nose guard and you make sure you help the center with him, and I don't want his rear end in the backfield. Does that mean I gotta block down on him all the way down? Go ahead, go ahead. Block that gosh darn nose guard and get your fanny in the way of that linebacker in case he wants to come through too. What has to be a given in this case is that our tight end understands that we're interested in running the wing tee. We are interested in creating lateral movement with him. That tight end, when he blocks down, is not leaning his stomach against anyone, and he's not putting his hands on someone and shielding them. He is, he is blocking in gap block fashion, leading with his inside foot, head in front with his right shoulder, and he is creating movement. In the wing tee, we want movement. We want people, uh, our backs are looking for prescribed landmarks, and we want lateral movement. That's why we're out flanking people and blocking down on them. I'm not blocking down on them to create a stalemate. I want movement. And the more movement the tight end can get on that five technique tackle, it condenses the area that that nose and linebacker can get through. This is not clinic talk. I've done this for years. I have executed it. I've pre-practiced it. It's a situation we have worked till the cows came home. That nose guard in the A-gap is not going to violate us and bother us and keep us from running buck sweep. I know people that will keep the inside or the play side guard in in that case. Well, we don't, we don't pull the play side guard in that situation. Then you're not running buck sweep and you're missing a heck of a chance to get the front side guard out there. We're pulling both guards on buck sweep and I don't give a rat's rooty tooty who shows up in the A-gaps. We're running it. We're out and we're going because the center has the play side A gap, the tackle's blocking down, the tight end's creating movement, and we're running it. Running back, stay at a four yard level. Don't run a power course on this, or you're gonna allow defenders to seep in the backfield, to reach and grab your ankle and destroy you. Stay on a four yard level, look at that, run, that, that wing back's hip and cut off the wing back's hip on a dime, it's a 90 degree cut. You'll be amazed how much seepage you can tolerate with buck sweep if your running back stays on a four yard level. You can tolerate some seepage. You don't coach the seepage, but every once in a while, you know, stuff happens. Stay on a four yard level, you'll help us make blocks for you and we'll run buck sweep up in there. You know, there are certainly more problems people can give you than I'm mentioning. I'm mentioning the ones through experience with 28 years of doing this that I have run into. And, and uh, I'm mentioning to you the, 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 the bigger ones, the, the, uh, the more profound difficulties that have been pre pre presented to me and my associates in doing this. I can't, I can't finish this tape without showing you uh, someone who wants to violate the backside A-gap. Because that can cause you problems too if you have an undisciplined fullback. Please remember, by itemization, center, front side A-gap. I just pounded that at you. That should, be a <laughs> that should be pretty well put in. Hey, fullback, you got backside A-gap. So many fullbacks want to take the fake from the quarterback. And again, the quarterback's not extending the ball. The fullback is creating the, the fake at the mesh point by being tight to the midline. And also he covers up in typical, I got the ball, you know, fashion. But what he does is he sits his fanny in the backside A gap and he is butt to butt, cheek to cheek with the center. So many fullbacks want to continue to run upfield. You know, I just gave you a great fake, coach. I just ran 10 yards upfield. You're always yelling at us for not faking. You're not helping us if you run upfield on this because you vacate the backside A gap. People can start running through there. People now can violate that four yard level by the running back. Remember, we block every gap and we're just sitting in there. That fullback, when he passes through the quarterback level, is going to sit his haunches down and become the center's twin. They're right next to each other. And now no one can violate that backside A-gap. No one can scoot through it. No one can squeeze as a defensive lineman and get through there. Now you might have some seepage, but he's going to have to run the fullback over to get in there. Keep your running back at the four-yard level. Have the center and the fullback block corresponding A-gaps, and you can run buck sweep against any interior stunt or otherwise. Don't chase people. Center, you don't have the nose. 
you have the A-gap to the front side. Fullback, you don't have the nose. You have whoever violates the backside A-gap. What if they stack and do all those twist stunts? Everyone's got a gap. Believe in the system. You have a place on the field to defend on buck sweep. Try multiple formations and run buck sweep, no matter what your, your offensive set might be. Again, at the risk of being repetitive. I don't want to run off shotgun guys. If you're a shotgun guy, you know darn well you can run buck sweep. Don't let different secondaries take the play away from you. Use multiple formations. Don't let different defensive alignments take the play away from you. Use different formations. Nasty flex your tight end against eight-man front hardball people who want to four-four you. Run to the weak side of unbalance. Spread people out. Run the same gosh darn plays both ways. Buck sweep's a great football play. It gives you great abilities to put the defense in conflict. You can, you can run trap, sweep, waggle, and variations. Keep the wing tee in your concept, no matter how broad you want to get with formation or concept. It's a great concept, and buck sweep is a staple play that has, heck, has been around since Adam was in sandals. I hope that uh, this particular tape has given you a look at how to run this play from a variety of sets against a lot of different looks. That was my purpose. I thank you for being a part of this and, and uh, making, my, making it available for me to do this because I have a lot of fun doing it. And uh, again, uh, the best to you in football.